I got two days in a row now, well, two broadcasts in a row with Julie here. Welcome back to the Life Together broadcast. We are on part 14 of our first love series. We hope that you're enjoying this. We've been going through the book of Song of Solomon. We are in chapter three. We're going to do verses one through 11 today. And um, you want to read that or you want me to read? I can read. All right. Oh, we're going to do the whole chapter of three. I didn't even look down at that. That's you a know. lot of reading. I did a, 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 actually, they're not very long chapters. Anyway, go ahead. Upon my bed at night, I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. The sentinels found me as they went about in the city. Have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely I had passed them when I found him whom my soul loves. I held him and would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her, con of her that conceived me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the wild does, do not stir up or awaken love until it is ready. What is that coming up from the wilderness, like a column of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the fragrant powders of the merchant? Look, it is the litter of Solomon. Around it are sixty mighty men of the mighty men of Israel, all equipped with swords and expert in war each with his sword at his thigh because of the alarms by night. King Solomon made himself a palanquin? What's yours say? Mine says carriage or like a chair type of thing, like a, like a um, chariot. We'll go with that. From the wood of Lebanon, he made its posts of silver, its back of gold, its seats of purple, its interior with was inlaid with love. Daughters of Jerusalem, come out. Look, O daughters of Zion, at King Solomon, at the crown with which his mother crowned him, on the day of his wedding, on the day of the gladness of his heart. So there you have chapter three of the Song of Solomon. And, and like I've said before, this is not like an in-depth, you know, <laughs> I'm sure that you can go look up commentaries and they will give you much more in depth than I'm going to give you. But this is as I studied this, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to just tell you what I saw and, and, and how I felt it. And, and some of it you will find there. But first love, there's a protection in first love. Mm -hmm. and, and we see here that that she starts out and she can't find him. Let me ask you, what's your response to the darkness going on in the world? What's your response to everything that you see going on? How, how are you responding? What is yours? Is your because your response is very telling what your connection is to first love. How you respond to things gives that away. And so here we see that she sought him and could not find him. Okay, doesn't mean he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Means that that it, it, it's almost like like I'm asking. There's darkness all around. Where's God? Why do bad things happen? Where's God at? You know, it's kind of like that. That's that's what I see. And then, you know, so what's your response? What's your immediate response to a trial, to a challenge? What do you do? You know, she she begins to go looking. I've got to find him. Yeah. I had a I had a guy. We we sold a a desk in Credenza, and I had a guy. This wasn't too terribly long ago, that um, he came and and they were talking in a language, and I I'm like I have no idea what that language is. So I asked the guy, "What's your nationality?" And he was from Russia, and so we got to talking. And he asked me what I do. And, and we had just gotten back from our, our, we were in between North Carolina and Van Wert, just gotten back from North Carolina tent revival. And, and I told him uh, that, that, you know, we, we, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We traveled a city and, and he, he responded like, because all he knows is Orthodox. So he's like, you're a priest. What made you become a priest? And I said, well, I'm not exactly a priest. I'm married with four kids. Not exactly how the priestship works in Russia. I don't know. But anyway, he pulled me aside and he goes, I want to ask you a question. He said, what do you do 
if somebody is standing, he goes, what do you say to them if somebody has just gone through a horrific event, just gone through a major trial, lost a kid, a terrorist attack, something like that? And I said, you know, I don't know that there's per se any words I could do to bring comfort. I said, but what I can do is I have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. I have a peace that I can really, I said, I just got back from, from, from guys who are in the military that, that there's no peace around them. And they, they came up and they said, I've never experienced peace. The depth of the peace I experienced, they, they had no words for it. And so, you know, what do you do with all this? Are you at peace? Yeah. You know, are you searching elsewhere? What are you doing when all these things, what's your immediate response? Do you immediately go to God or do you immediately go other place and try to find help apart from God? Go to doctors, go to family members, go to the bank to, to take out a loan, go to these different, what is your response when things are going on in your life? She went and looked and it says, um, that, that she, the, she found the watchman. Nobody else was around. It was just the watchman. If you flip over to Psalm 127 in verse 1, it says this, Unless Jehovah builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless Jehovah watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So if, if God is gone in this situation, then the watchmen are useless, but they're not. So there's not many in the city. Jesus said this, he said in Matthew 7. He says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to light. And those who find it are few. The, 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 the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Many are called but few are chosen. And we see in verse four, you can cut in any time. No, I'm, I'm following okay. along. In verse four, we see that God was never far off. Her, her beloved was never far off. You always, I don't care what happens. I've said this many times. It doesn't take more than about 15 minutes when something hits me. When something comes, it tries to knock peace out of me, knock something out. I have learned uh, several things. Number one, before that ever happens, I've already got seed in the ground. Number two, when it happens, I quickly, this hasn't always been the case, but I quickly recognize it. I quickly identify it and I quickly get myself back into the presence of God and say, does it? matter what's going on here doesn't matter what's happening I, most of the time we don't have control over those things anyway right i mean we could sit there but but what control if if stress is coming on well you know G, you know the word says who can add a single day to their life by worrying right. it's not going to do me any good and so i immediately i just had something recently come up and i said now nah, i mean I, I there's nothing i can do and so you could sit there. I didn't throw up my hands and say, I'm not going to do anything. I immediately got back in the presence of God, immediately got back in the word and said, all right, God, I've got seed in the ground. I've got, I've got a harvest coming. I don't know how you're going to do this. I'm willing to be a part of the solution. And, and what you have to understand is I've, I've talked to many people many times and they're like, I'll ask the question. You know, how many of you have ever gone through a season where you just couldn't hear God's voice and, and they'll raise their hand. And, and generally, the majority of them, if I say, in that time, could you still feel his presence? And the majority of them say yes. And I, you have to understand that his voice is his presence. Mm -hmm. And so you have to stay. So, so when situations arise, always follow the road that leads to peace. And so you got something before I, I'm, I've kind of finished verses one through five there. Well, I think it's important to notice that a, she doesn't, I think a lot of times people have a tendency to, to hunker down and do nothing when things arise. They like dwell in their fear. They literally like, you'll see them. They just, they just kind of disappear from all humanity and they're gone. That's it. Bye. And you, in, when you see them next, they've become exactly what they feared they would become. But I have found when we have faced things that have been challenging, if I will just, because, because I am not, I'm not a hunker downer. I am a chaotic, like, you know, like the whole thing where, um, 
something happens and there's a riot and there didn't even need to be a riot but there was a riot because people didn't know what to do and so they just scatter in all directions that's more my personality believe it or not <laughs> um but what i found is if i will just stop welcome the holy spirit to come and bring peace and then move forward then the things that i'm facing the challenges that have come that the the fear that wells up in our hearts it's just silenced and then i can move forward in absolute peace knowing that i am now moving in his will i'm now moving in his character because i am not i'm not moving out of emotion i am moving out of what i know is right yeah yeah and so continuing on verse six, talking about coming out of the wilderness, and, and I'm gonna cover verses six through eight here, but coming out of the wilderness, God is always going to bring you out. No matter what situation, we talked about this on the last broadcast, about the voice of victory, that, that God always has you, no matter what's going on in your life, you can, you can win. Yeah. And so God wants to bring you out of those, those dark places and bring you. And, and he can keep you from ever going back there again. Yes. And it says that, that there's these columns of smoke. I view this as, again, this is a protection. First love protects. You know, I, I view it as the incense altar, which is a representation of our prayers. And as, as, as you put your prayers on the altar and it begins to go up, it creates this protection. There was the clouds by day, the, 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 for lack of a better word, kind of like these columns of smoke that protected them as they came out. And that's what God wants. And then it goes in and it starts talking about the um, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. Myrrh is a sign of purification. You have to live a pure life. If you talk to God about power, God's going to talk to you about purity. If you are not uh, living a pure life, he doesn't have any responsibility. If you're not living a pure life, you're not in first love. So there's no responsibility for protection on his end. You've mm -hmm. stepped out from it. All you have to do is, is get back in. Esther, in the word of God, she spent six months bathing pure in, in myrrh, just in myrrh is what the word of God says before she ever went to the king. The blood of Jesus does this in seconds. Yeah. And so you have to get things right. You have uh, frankincense. Now, frankincense is interesting. You see this many times. You see that they poured frankincense on the bread of the presence. And, um, but again, this is, to me, this is what the benefits of the blood of Jesus gives us. Let me just give you a few of what this does in the natural. But God can take care of this in a second, and you don't have to sit there and do that. It will reduce stress and negative emotions. Just oh, like yeah. I said, I don't continue on. The blood of Jesus has given me the ability. He covers me, and I make the decision to always follow the road to lead to peace. Yeah. Anytime emotional instability tries to come, and it does come, I don't sit there and entertain it for very long and so these things these protective things you know the blood of jesus you know when you're a new creation you get a new immune system yeah so so it you know it boosts your immune and prevents illness you can fight all these deadly diseases the blood of jesus can boom because of what he did on the cross he destroyed all the works of the enemy cancer can't stand Amen. none of these things can stand there can't be these side effects of drugs that we've taken you know whether we knew what we were doing when we took them or not the side effects that they're there now even from things like the vaccines and and different things that we take as protect all of them have side effects there's something in them even if the good outweighs the bad so to speak but the blood of jesus can take and bring that to an end there's many things that these things and i, I just it has no bad side effects yeah, it has no <laughs> bad side effects. You know, these things. And so these are just different things. Like when I look at frankincense, these are what I see that what God can do. When I see frankincense in the word of God, I see that that God can turn back aging to somebody like Sarah, who was almost 100 years old that can have birth. Now, I know that in today's day and age, ain't nobody wishing on that one. But I'm saying, <laughs> but God renewed her youth is what my point is. Yeah. And, and, and God, you know, I was never worried. You can ask Julie. 
I, you know, my mom at the time had a house down in Florida and she needed to get back in 2020 and everything. I said, I fly down there right now when everybody was losing their ever love of mind. I didn't care. Why? Because I knew I was protected. No germs or anything are going to take my life from me. It improves our memory. When we begin, God begins to recall things. We forget those things that are in the past, but we bring to remembrance the things that need to be remembered. Yeah. And God begins to bring things into uh, a balance in our life, like even our hormones and people who are in, you know, infertile and can't have children. God, boom, boom, God will give them the ability to have children. Amen. And so also sleeping, taking away pain, all these things are available to you as a protective mechanism. And God always protects his bride. Yeah. The church is well guarded. Yes. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There are more for us than there are against us. You see these in all these, these mighty men. He protects us against the terror that's at night. And, um, you see that in Psalm 91.5. I'll come back to that. Uh, we'll keep going. Unless you got something to add. I'm going to go through the last few verses here. No, I just... Uh, I was just thinking about the fact that even if we lose our first love, he never loses his. He's always the same. He's always... He <laughs> the problem's is, always on our end. The problem's always us. But he is always desiring to woo us back in that is his sole purpose in every last thing he's done is for us to be with him and so always remember that even when things are challenging even when you know lies are being spoken to you all the garbage that sets people in in condemnation and all of that stuff i want you to remember what i'm saying god is always drawing loving and desiring for you to be with him yeah, yeah. And so verses 9 through 11, God provides the only way to salvation, and that is through his son. So, so you see this here as, as he's, we're give, given this natural thing talking about King Solomon. Jesus, King Jesus. So that is the way to salvation. It says that his posts are silver. That means that, again, once again, there's, an, uh, there's protection overhead. Flip over real quick to Galatians chapter 2. You know, in the app, if you're watching this in the app or even watching the replay, Julie cracks up at me because I listen to podcasts at two times speed. It does. It's crazy. You can do that in our app. <laughs> anyway, Galatians, Galatians 2 9. And when James, Cyphus, and John, who seem to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, and that we should go to the Gentiles and they too to the circumcised, in other words, to the Jews. So there's this, there's, he says here, these posts, these pillars of silver. And so the, the shepherds, overseers, there has to be people. Who's in your life? Um, you know, they, the people, they, the pastor in your life better care more about people than they do about power. Mm -hmm. If they care more about power, you better find a different shepherd. You better find. And when it's over your head, go over your head, go over your head, talks about the backs are gold. Again, pure gold. This speaks again of purity. There's look, if you want protection of first love, there's got to be, you've got to be pure towards your first love. And, and it wasn't only the back, but, but this is what you leaned upon. And so, and, and not only that, so, so you could lean upon this, but the, what, it, what it's saying here is the underbelly of this chariot was also overlaid with gold. Again, protection. So you could lean on the word of pure gold. You can find your foundation in the word of God. This is where you find that pure protection is in the word of God. The seed of purple. Now I will say in commentaries, I saw that they all said that this represented the blood of Jesus. So in other words, you are sheltered once again, protected from God's wrath. And we see this, uh, if you just read this in Romans, I know I'm kind of flying through this. I don't know why, but, um, Again, you can watch it at like half speed too, you know, if you want to slow it down a little bit for people like Julie here, you That's know. my speed. You know, I, if, if I listen to anything now at regular speed, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so slow. But anyway, the blood of Jesus is a protection against the wrath of God. Romans 118, 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. So if you don't have purity, then you are not protected from the wrath of God. Because those who are unrighteous will suppress the truth. And so, and then all these things, everything that happens is birthed out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And all of this comes, it says here, um, look unto King Solomon. All this comes by fixing your gaze upon Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. If you saw part one, you saw me talk about this. And so, but keep your focus on him. Don't lose your joy. And you will always have. Listen, anybody who plays it safe will never make an impact in the world. But knowing that if you'll go all in, that the word of God tells us that he protects us in all that we do. Go ahead. You got something before well, I finish this up. Yeah, as it says in verse 10, that the interior was inlaid with love. I was thinking about the fact that inlaid is actually, it makes an indention. You can't take out something that's been inlaid and not see that there was something there, like in furniture, in anything. If, if, if what's inlaid is missing, it's clear that it's missing, right? Because it leaves a mark. And so we are to be inlaid with his love. We are to be the thing that represents who he is. And if his love is missing in our actions, then it's evident to those around us. Yeah. So let me finish this by just reading Psalm 91. Many of you know this, but listen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So you have the only way you can dwell there is by purity. And when you're in the shelter of the Almighty, there's nothing but protection. Mm -hmm. I will say to Jehovah, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day. And we read about that just in the Song of Solomon about the terror at night. I said I would come back to it. So you don't fear that. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. This is what's been going on. There's been pestilence stalking in the darkness and people have allowed that that has driven them you know uh, our pastor said this recently that that has driven people to prayer more than god ever did and that's sad that's scary don't let the things of this world you know many times i've heard people say well this trial has just been keeping us on our knees what would have happened if the trial found you on your knees yeah. already there been a different story, I guarantee you. So fear not the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your one side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You got to get in the butt. You got to get in the butt. You got to get in the butt. Thousand on one hand, ten thousand on the other, but, but it will not fall you, come near you. You will only look with your eyes, is what we just said, and see the rep recompense of the wicked. Because you have made Jehovah your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No evil. This is Old Testament. And if this is Old Testament, how much greater now with the blood of Jesus? Amen. No evil shall be able to befall you. No plague will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and on the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample under feet. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is, I mean, my God. Listen, God has no responsibility to protect you, to financially provide for you, to bless you. To do, uh, I mean, he's always going to love you. Yeah. 
But until you get into what God has called you to do, you wonder why. Listen, I didn't wait for other people to come on board with us to do what we're doing. We put our money where our mouth was, and we floated this with our own finances and went. But I want to give you, because if if we just financed this whole thing, it would be selfish of me. And I want to give you a chance to partner with us because it's important. And and as we were reading in 2 Kings 4, the Shumanite woman, listen, you may sit there and, and the fact is, is that they never mention her name. I know I'm kind of going backwards here. I was already to the point where she had the kid and I think she had lost the kid, but they never mention her name. We don't know who she is. She's, she takes up an entire chapter and then a chapter, a couple chapters later, she's there again. And we still don't know her name. Let me tell you something. When you partner with God with your finances, heaven knows your name. And you may sit there and say, oh, I can't believe it. Listen, what did it say about the centurion in Acts? It said because of his prayers and his giving, mm-hmm. he got God's attention. Wasn't just his prayers. Right. It was also his giving. Your giving gets God's attention. And so today I want to ask you, will you partner with us? You can go to our website, thisislifetogether.com backslash give. You can give uh, securely, credit card, bank account there. If you want to write a check, you can send it to P.O. Box 4113, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, 47025, and can give that way. Just like I just said, we put our money where our mouth is. If you love God, one of the ways that that brings protection, and I can show you just in this story in Second Kings, read it. It brought protection. Yeah. You know, didn't mean things didn't go wrong, but it brought the dead back to life. And so we're just asking for people, anybody who partners with us on a monthly basis, we're going to send my first two books, What on Earth Am I to Do? This will help you in anything you're called to do in life. And the second one is a prayer and fasting devotional journal. It was there's so much. It's 21 days prayer, fasting, devotional journal. But you want to get this one quick. Get this one quick because just in a couple weeks, Uh, At the beginning of the year, January 2nd through 22nd, we start the year consecrated to God with 21 days of prayer and fasting. Starting on the 1st, we're going to go through, we're going to use this book as a a template and begin to go through this. We want you to journal, write down things. You can get this on Amazon. You can get this from us. If you see us, we generally have a copy. If you can't do either one of those, go on the website, contact us. We will figure out a way to get you a copy of this so you can follow along with us. I've already talked to several people who are are planning on being on that broadcast it's not just going to be me it's not just going to be her but we've got some other pastors that we're talking to and different people who want to be involved in this uh through through that time frame and listen now nah, i won't even do that we'll do that next time so you got anything else you want to add nope so that is part 14 that first love there's a protection in first love And so we will be back next time with part 15. Once again, please, you know, uh, like and subscribe and like and share. That helps our our sponsors. Well, whoever you're watching this from, it it, it helps overcome their algorithms and different things. If you comment, like, share. So please do that. And um, until next time, that's all we got. Love you. See you then.